All right, tonight we're going to continue our study in Jeremiah. Does anybody have any comments after last week's lesson on Jeremiah 1, which kind of brought us into the introduction and or actually God's God's mission or commands to uh, Jeremiah and what he wanted him to do. And um, you'll remember kind of the, well, a couple of key verses of Jeremiah was um, where God told Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. And then, of course, Jeremiah said, I, well, I don't know how to speak. How am I supposed to do this? I'm only a child. But the Lord said, don't say I'm only a child. You must go to everyone that I send you to and say whatever I say to you. And then he reminded him that to get yourself ready, stand up and say whatever I command you. Do not be terrified or I will terrify you before them. Today I've made you a fortified city, an iron pillar, and a bronze wall to stand against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests, and the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they will not overcome you. For I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. So Jeremiah knows that the task he's getting ready to partake or to dive into is not going to be easy and he knows that God's going to be with him because God promises to be with him so as we get into chapter 2 and we'll see we're going to try to cover chapters 2 through 6 this evening I don't know if we will but the uh, uh, this group of chapters really covers five messages that describes Israel's breaking of the covenant with the Lord. And the, um, I want to read, I want, I want to try to go ahead and read all six chapters right now and then come back and, and break some things out of the five messages that are there so let's get in hopefully I don't run out of breath and uh, and we don't run out of time in Jeremiah chapter 2 the word of the Lord came to me go and proclaim in the hear in the hearing of Jerusalem I remember the devotion of your youth how as a bride you loved me and followed me through the desert Th through a land not sown Israel was holy to the Lord the first fruits of the harvest all who devoured her were held guilty, and disaster overtook them, declares the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, all you clans of the house of Israel. This is what the Lord says. What fault did your fathers find in me, that they strayed so far from me? They followed worthless idols and became worthless themselves. They did not ask, where is the Lord who brought us up out of Egypt and led us through the barren wilderness, through a land of deserts and rifts? a land of drought and darkness, a land where no one travels and no one lives. I brought you into a fertile land to eat its fruit and rich produce, but you came and defiled my land and made my inheritance detestable. The priest did not ask, where is the Lord? Those who deal with the law did not know me. The leaders rebelled against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal, following worthless idols. Therefore, I bring these charges against you, declares the Lord. And I will bring charges against your children's children. Cross over to the coast of Kittim and look. Send to Kedar and observe closely. See if there has been anything, ever been anything like this. Has a na nation ever changed its gods? Yet they are not gods at all. But my people have exchanged their glory for worthless idols. Be appalled at this, O heavens, and shudder with great horror, declares the Lord. My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own cisterns. 
broken cisterns that it cannot hold water? Is Israel a servant, a slave by birth? Why then has he become plunder? Lions have roared, they have growled at him. They have laid waste his land. His towns are burned and deserted. Also the men of Memphis and Taphanes have, shown, have shaved the crown of your head. Have you not brought this on yourselves by forsaking the Lord your God when he led you in the way? Now why, do, why go to Egypt to drink water from Shehor, and why go to Assyria to drink water from the river? Your wickedness will punish you. Your backsliding will rebuke you. Consider then and realize how evil and bitter it is for you when you forsake the Lord your God and have no awe of me, declares the Lord, the Lord Almighty. Long ago you broke off your yoke and tore off your bonds. You said, I will not serve you. Indeed, on every hill and under every spreading tree, you lay down as a prostitute. I had planted you like a choice vine of sound and reliable stock. How then did you turn against me into a corrupt wild vine? Although you wash yourself with soda and use an abundance of soap, the stain of your guilt is still before me, declares the sovereign Lord. How can you say I am not defiled? I have not run after the bells. See how you behaved in the valley. Consider what you have done. You are a swift she-camel running here and there, a wild donkey accustomed to the desert, sniffling the wind in her craving. In her heat, who can restrain her? Any males that pursue her need not tire themselves at mating time, for they will find her. <clears throat> Do not run until your feet are bare and your throat is dry. But you said, it's no use. I love foreign gods, and I must go after them. As a thief is disgraced when he is caught, so the house of Israel is disgraced. They, their kings and their officials, their priests and their prophets, they say to wood, you are my father, and to stone, you gave me birth. They have turned their backs to me and not their faces. Yet when they are in trouble, they say, come and save us. Where then are the gods you made for yourselves? Let them come if they can save you when you are in trouble. For you have as many gods as you have towns, O Judah. Why do you bring charges against me? You have all rebelled against me, declares the Lord. In vain I punished your people. <clears throat> they did not respond to correction. Your sword has devoured your prophets like a ravening lion. You of this generation, consider the word of the Lord. Have I been a desert to Israel or a land of great darkness? Why do my people say, we are free to roam? We will come to you no more. Does a maiden forget her jewelry, a bride her wedding ornaments? Yet my people have forgotten me, days without number. How skilled you are at pursuing love. Even the worst of women can learn from your ways. On your clothes men find the lifeblood of the innocent poor. Though you did not catch them breaking in, yet in spite of all of this you say, I am innocent, he is not angry with me. But I will pass judgment on you because you say, I have not sinned. Why do you go about so much, changing your ways? You will be disappointed by Egypt as you were by Assyria. You will also leave that place with your hands on your head, for the Lord has rejected those you trust. You will not be helped by them. If a man divorces his wife and she leaves him and marries another man, should he return to her again? Would not the land completely be defiled? But you have lived as a prostitute with many lovers. Would you now return to me, declares the Lord? Look up to the barren heights and see, is there any place where you have not been ravished? By the roadside you sat waiting for lovers, sat like a nomad in the desert. You have defiled the land with your prostitution and wickedness. Therefore the showers have been withheld, and no spring rains have fallen. Yet you have the brazen look of a prostitute. You refuse to blush with shame. Have you not just called to me, my father, my friend, from my youth? Will you always be angry? Will your wrath continue forever? This is how you talk, but you do all the evil you can. During the king, reign of King Hosiah, the Lord said to me, Have you seen what faithless Israel has done? She has gone up on every high hill and under every spreading tree and has committed adultery there. I thought that after she had done all of this, she would return to me, but she did not. And her faithful sister Judah saw it. <clears throat> I gave faithless Israel her certificate of divorce and sent her away because of all her adulteries. Yet I saw that her unfaithful sister Judah had no fear. She also went out and committed adultery. Because Israel's immorality mattered so little to her, 
She defiled the land and committed adultery with stone and wood. In spite of all this, her unfaithful sister Judah did not return to me with all her heart, but only in pretense, declares the Lord. The Lord said to me, Faithless Israel is more righteous than unfaithful Judah. Go proclaim this message toward the north. Return, faithless Israel, declares the Lord. I will frown on you no longer, for I am merciful, declares the Lord. I will not be angry forever. Only acknowledge your guilt. You have rebelled against the Lord your God. You have scattered your favors to foreign gods under every spreading tree and have not obeyed me, declares the Lord. Return, faithless people, declares the Lord, for I am your husband. I will choose you, one from a town and two from a clan, and bring you to Zion. Then I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will lead you with knowledge and understanding. In those days when your numbers have increased greatly in the land, declares the Lord, men will no longer say the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. It will never enter their minds or be remembered. It will not be missed, nor will another one be made. At that time they will call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all nations will gather in Jerusalem to honor the name of the Lord. No longer will they follow the stubbornness of their evil hearts. In those days, the house of Judah will join the house of Israel, and together they will come from a northern land to the land I gave your forefathers as an inheritance. I myself said, how gladly would I treat you like sons and give you a desirable land, the most beautiful inheritance of any nation. I thought you would call me father and not turn away from following me. But like a woman unfaithful to her husband, so you have been unfaithful to me, O house of Israel, declares the Lord. A cry is heard on the barren heights, the weeping and pleading of the people of Israel, because they have perverted their ways and have forgotten the Lord their God. Return, faithless people, I will cure you of backsliding. Yes, we will come to you, for you are the Lord our God. Surely the idolatrous commotion on the hills and mountains is a deception. Surely in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. From our youth, shameful gods have consumed the fruits of our father's labor, their flocks and herds, their sons and daughters. Let us lie down in our shame and let us disgrace, let our disgrace cover us. We have sinned against the Lord our God, both we and our fathers. From our youth until this day, we have not obeyed the Lord our God. If you will return, O Israel, return to me, declares the Lord. If you put your detestable idols out of my sight and no longer go astray, and if in a truthful, just, and righteous way you swear, as surely as the Lord lives, then the nations will be blessed by him, and in him they will glory. This is what the Lord says to the men of Judah and to Jerusalem. Break up your unplowed grounds and do not sow among thorns. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord. Circumcise your hearts, you men of Judah and people of Jerusalem, or my wrath will break out and burn like fire because of the evil you have done. Burn with no one to quench it. Announce in Judah and proclaim in Jerusalem and say, sound the trumpet throughout the land. Cry aloud and say, gather together, let us flee to the fortified cities. Raise the signal to go to Zion. Flee for safety without delay, for I am bringing disaster from the north, even terrible destruction. A lion has come out of its lair. A destroyer of nations has set out. He has left his place to lay waste your land. Your towns will lie in ruins without inhabitant. So put on sackcloth, lament, and well, for the fierce anger of the Lord has not turned away from us. <clears throat> in that day, declares the Lord, the king and the officials will lose heart, the priest will be horrified, and the prophets will be appalled. Then I said, Ah, sovereign Lord, how completely you have deceived this people in Jerusalem by saying you will have peace when the sword is at our throats. At that time, this people in Jerusalem will be told, a scorching wind from the barren heights in the desert blows toward my people, but not to winnow or cleans, cleanse. A wind too strong for that comes from me. Now I pronounce my judgments against them. Look, he advances like the clouds. His chariots come like a whirlwind. His horses are swifter than eagles. Woe to us, we are ruined. O Jerusalem, wash the evil from your heart and be saved. How long will you harbor wicked thoughts? A voice is announcing from Dan, proclaiming disaster from the hills of Ephraim. Tell this to the nations. Proclaim it to Jerusalem. A besieging army is coming from a distant land. 
raising a war cry against the cities of Judah. They surround her like men guarding a field, because she had, has rebelled against me, declares the Lord. You own conduct and you, your own conduct and actions have brought this upon you. This is your punishment, how bitter it is, how it pierces to the heart. O oh, my anguish, my anguish, I writhe in pain. O oh, the agony of my heart, my heart pounds within me. I cannot keep silent, for I have heard the sound of the trumpet. I have heard the battle cry. Disaster follows disaster. The whole land lies in ruins. In an instant, my tents are destroyed. My shelter in a moment. How long must I see the battle standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? My people are fools. They do not know me. They are senseless children. They have no understanding. They are skilled in doing evil. They know not how to do good. I looked at the earth, and it was formless and empty, and at the heavens, and their light was gone. I looked at the mountains, and they were quaking, and the hills were swaying. I looked, and there were no people. Every bird in the sky had flown away. I looked, and the fruitful land was a desert. All its towns lay in ruins before the Lord, before his fierce anger. This is what the Lord says. The whole land will be ruined, though I will not destroy it completely. Therefore, the earth will mourn, and the heavens above grow dark, because I have spoken. And I will not relent. I have decided and will not turn back. <coughs> At the sound of horsemen and archers, Every town takes to flight. Some go into the thickets, some climb up on the rocks. All the towns are deserted, no one lives in them. What are you doing, O devastated one? Why dress yourself in a scarlet and put on jewels of gold? Why shade your eyes with paint? You adorn yourself in vain. Your lovers despise you, they seek your life. I hear a cry as of a woman in labor, a groan as of one bearing her first child, the cry of the daughter of Zion gasping for breath, stretching out her hands and saying, Alas, I am fainting. My life is given over to the murderers. Go up and down the streets of Jerusalem. Look around and consider. Search through her squares. If you can find but one person who deals honestly and seek the truth, I will forgive this city. Although they say, as surely as the Lord lives, still they are swearing falsely. O Lord, do not your eyes look for truth. You struck them, but they felt no pain. You crushed them, but they refused correction. They made their faces harder than stone and refused to repent. I thought, these are only the poor. They are the foolish, for they do not know the way of the Lord, the requirements of their God. So I will go to the leaders and speak to them. Surely they know the way of the Lord, the requirements of their God. But with one accord, they too had broken off the yoke and torn off the bonds. Therefore, a lion from the forest will attack them. A wolf from the desert will ravage them. A leopard will lie in wait near their towns to tear to pieces any who venture out. For their rebellion is great and their backslidings many. Why should I forgive you? Your children have forsaken me and sworn by gods that are not gods. I supplied all their needs, yet they committed adultery and thronged to the houses of prostitutes. They are well fed, lusty stallions, each name another for another man's wife. Should I not punish them for this, declares the Lord? Should I not avenge myself on such a nation as this? Go through her vineyards and ravage them, but do not destroy them completely. Strip off her branches, for these people do not belong to the Lord. The house of Israel and the house of Judah have been utterly unfaithful to me, declares the Lord. They have lied about the Lord. They said he will do nothing. No harm will come to us. We will never see sword or famine. The prophets are but wind, and the word is not in them. So let what they say be done to them. Therefore, this is what the Lord God Almighty says. <clears throat> because the people have spoken these words, and these people, the wood, I will make my words in your mouth a fire, and these people, the wood it consumes. O house of Israel, declares the Lord, I am bringing a distant nation against you, an ancient and enduring nation, a people whose language you do not know, whose speech you do not understand. Their quivers are like an open grave, all of them are mighty warriors. They will devour your harvest and food, devour your sons and daughters. They will devour your flocks and herds, devour your vines and fig trees. With the sword, they will destroy the fortified cities in which you trust. Yet even in those days, declares the Lord, I will not destroy you completely. And when the people ask, why has the Lord our God done all of this to us? You will tell them, 
as you have forsaken me and served foreign gods in your own land, so now you will serve foreigners in a land not your own. <clears throat> Announce this to the house of Jacob and proclaim it to Judah. Hear this, you foolish and senseless people. You have eyes, but you do not see. You have ears, but you do not hear. Should you not fear me, declares the Lord? Should you not tremble in my presence? I made the sand a boundary for the sea, an everlasting barrier it cannot cross. The waves may row, but they cannot prevail. They may roar, but they cannot cross it. But these people have stubborn and rebellious hearts. They have turned aside and gone away. <coughs> they do not say to themselves, let us fear the Lord our God, who gives autumn and spring rains and season, who assures us of the regular weeks of harvest. Your wrongdoings have kept these away. Your sins have deprived you of good. Among my people are wicked men who lie in wait like men who snare birds and like those who set traps to catch men. Like cages full of birds, their houses are full of deceit. They have become rich and powerful and have grown fat and sleek. Their evil deeds have no limit. They do not plead the case of the fatherless to win it. They do not defend the rights of the poor. Should I not punish them for this, declares the Lord? Should I not avenge myself on such a nation as this? A horrible and shocking thing has happened in the land. The prophets prophesy, lie, prophesy lies. The priests rule by their own authority. And my people love it this way. But what will you do in the end? Flee for safety, people of Benjamin. Flee from Jerusalem. Sound the trumpet in Tekoa. Raise the signal over Beth Hakrim. For disaster looms out of the north, even terrible destruction. I will destroy the daughter of, Des of Zion, so beautiful and delicate. Shepherds and their flocks will come against her. They will pitch their tents around her, each tending his own portion. Prepare for battle against her. Arise, let us attack at noon. But alas, the daylight is fading, and the shadows of the evening grow long. So arise, let us attack at night, and destroy her fortresses. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Cut down the trees and build siege ramps against Jerusalem. The city must be punished. It is filled with oppression. As a well pours out its water, so she pours out her wickedness. Violence and destruction resound in her. Her sickness and wounds are ever before me. Take warning, O Jerusalem, for I will turn away from you and make your land desolate and no one can live in it. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Then let them glean the remnant of Israel as thoroughly as a vine. Pass your hand over the branches again like one gathering grapes. To whom can I speak and give warning? Who will listen to me? Their ears are closed so they cannot hear. The word of the Lord is offensive to them. They find no pleasure in it. <clears throat> but I am full of wrath of the wrath of the Lord, and I cannot hold it in. Pour it out on the children in the street and on the young men gathered together. Both husband and wife will be caught in it, and the old, those weighed down with years. Their houses will be turned over to others, together with their fields and their wives. When I stretch out my hand against those who live in the land, declares the Lord. From the least to the greatest, all are greedy for gain. Prophets and priests alike, all practice deceit. They dress the wound of my people as though it were not serious. Peace, peace, they say, when there is no peace. Are they ashamed of their loathsome conduct? No, they have no shame at all. They do not even know how to blush. So they will fall among the fallen. They will be brought down when I punish them, says the Lord. This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look, and look for ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it. You will find rest for your souls. But you said, we will not walk in it. I appointed watchmen over you and said, listen to the sound of the trumpet. But you said, we will not listen. Therefore hear, O nations, observe. O witnesses, what will happen to them? Hear, O earth, I am bringing disaster on this people, the fruit of their schemes, because they have not listened to my words and have rejected my law. What do I care about incense from Sheba or sweet calamus from a distant land? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable. Your sacrifices do not please me. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. I will put obstacles before this people. Fathers and sons alike will stumble over them. Neighbors and friends will perish. This is what the Lord says. Look, an army is coming from the land of the north. A great nation is being stirred up from the ends of the earth. They are armed with bow and spear. They are cruel and show no mercy. They sound like the roaring sea as they ride on their horses. 
They come like men in battle formation to attack you, O daughter of Zion. We have heard reports about them, and our hands hang limp. Anguish has gripped us, pain like that of a woman in labor. Do not go out into the fields or walk on the roads, for the enemy has a sword, and there is terror on every side. O oh, my people, put on sackcloth and roll in ashes. Mourn with bitter wailing, as for, an, as for an only son, for suddenly the destroyer will come upon us. I have made you a tester of metals, and my people the ore, that you may observe and test their ways. They are all hardened rebels, going about to slander. They are bronze and iron, they all act corruptly. The bellows blow fiercely to burn away the lead with fire, but the refining goes on in vain. The wicked are not purged out. They are called rejected silver because the Lord has rejected them. <clears throat> Quite a lesson to the people of Judah. And in, in the first part of this where we, were, we, we read, <clears throat> you know, that uh, he, he compares, uh, God compares, uh, Judah to an adulterous wife because they have pursued other gods <clears throat> and and he calls on them to repent in uh, in verses 3 I mean chapters 3 starting verse 6 all the way over to chapter 4 verse 4 he, he's calling on on Judah to repent because disaster is coming and we read several times in there that disaster is coming from the north. And later on, uh, not to uh, be a spoiler alert, but and we know Babylon, the Babylonians come down from the north and they take over Judah. And, the, and, and all of this that is, is being said, being told to them in chapters 3 through 6 becomes reality. <clears throat> but... Uh, they, Judah is very stubborn, very, very stubborn, and refuses to, to repent. And it results in God's rejecting of his people. But, you know, throughout these chapters, God is reminding Israel of his, of his love for Judah. And, you know, he is Israel's uh, husband who brought, her out of, brought them out of slavery in Egypt and entered into an exclusive covenant with them. And, you know, this, this grace that he has for Israel makes, makes these chapters or makes the fact that Israel will not uh, repent uh, shocking. And um, <clears throat> we, um, you know, he starts out talking about his love for them and then he tells them that they need to repent, follow in, in the footsteps. Over in um, in uh, the uh, the in ch in chapters two verse. Uh, 27 in the very last part of it um, yet they say when when they are in trouble they say come and save us where then are the gods you made for yourselves let them come if they can save you when you are in trouble and how many times in our lives do we do only when we're in trouble only when we're in need of God do we seek God uh, you know I'm sure that happens a lot of times in our life it reminds me I don't know how many of y'all listen to <clears throat> country and western, but it reminds me of a song by an uh, artist named Jelly Roll, and um, you know, he's got a record probably, a rap sheet probably 15 miles long, but he's changed his life, and, uh, but he has a song out, it's called, I Only Talk to God When I Need a Favor, and, uh, but um, it, we have that in our, in our lives, that we we need to be in constant prayer with God. And uh, are you trying to say something or you need to go to the bathroom?
the the and, and you know he he refers to Judah as an adulteress, and because of the fact that they have put other gods before him, they've gone out um, with uh, and, and built idols, and um, so he compares them to a prostitute, and 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 he tells them in chapter three, uh, verses three. Uh, Yet you have the brazen look of a prostitute. You refuse to blush with shame. Have you just not called to me, my father, my friend from my youth? Will you always be angry? Will you wrath? Will your wrath continue forever? And you know, in comparing to that, comparing to a prostitute who, you know, that's just the way of life. This is this is what Judah is doing. You don't care. You, you, you won't call on me uh, as your Lord, even though I have brought you out of Egypt and I've helped you all along through the desert. You ignore me. <clears throat> and I, I want to mention in the end of chapter 3, in uh, starting in verse 15, the prophecy of Jesus to come where he says, then I will give you shepherds after my own heart. And here again, he's expressing, you know, I'm angry with you and I'm going to destroy you. But he is expressing his love. Then I will give you shepherds after my own. He tells him in 14, return faithless people. I'm your husband. I will choose you one from a town and two from a clan and bring you to Zion. Then I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will lead you with knowledge and understanding. And in those days when your numbers have increased greatly in the land, men will no longer say the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. It will never enter into their minds or be remembered. It will not be missed, nor will another one be made. At that time they will call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all nations will gather in Jerusalem to honor the name of the Lord. No longer will they follow the stubbornness of their evil hearts. In those days the house of Judah will join the house of Israel, and together they will come from a northern land to the land I gave your forefathers as an inheritance. So here he's prophesying, he's telling them that <clears throat> there's one to come that is going to bring everyone together. And that's <clears throat> Jesus Christ. <clears throat> the Jeremiah's uh, speaks to them, he denounces their spiritual adultery describing how they have forsaken God and the spring of the living water for other gods, which are broken cisterns. When we talked about early on where they dug cisterns and, and those cisterns were broken, he was referring to the idols that they had, uh, that they had built. And, but they're, they're continually forgetful and ignorant, and he chides them in their ignorance that they have <clears throat> and forgetfulness of what God did for them. <clears throat> and also in Jeremiah's message, there's a strong call to uh, social justice. The people have not only abandoned God, but they've also abandoned their, uh, the, the right way of living. <clears throat> they oppress the poor, they deal falsely with each other, and they live in a way that's really socially unjust. And but, you know, the, the most dire part of Jeremiah's message is the warning of the impending invasion from the north and that there is going to be a divine judgment because of their actions. And it talks about how they will come in, they will, uh, they will take their tents, they will take their goods, they will take their sheep and cattle, and they will uh, 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 take their families. But he always continues to call them for repentance. Uh, he's, Jeremiah still holds out the hope for redemption, and he urges the people to break up their unplowned ground and do not sow among the thorns, symbolizing that return to God, ask for forgiveness, repent, and return to God. <clears throat> you know, in, in trying to bring this into everyday life that we have, you know, we're, 
were uh, increasingly obsessed with material goods, social status, digital lives, how many likes do I have on my social page? Uh, <clears throat> it's easy to forget what truly enriches our lives. And Jeremiah reminds us that lots of times it's the spiritual void that we have in our lives that we're trying to fill it with these other things. Just as the, the, those from Judah were trying to, you know, they began worshiping the idols, that they had a spiritual void that they were trying to fill. Whenever, whenever we have a, a spiritual void, something tries to fill that spiritual void. And that's why it's important that we continually fill ourselves with the knowledge of the Bible and study the Bible. It's easy to forget where we, one more, let me make this point, uh, Andy. It's easy for us to forget in our busy lives where, where we came from, what's, what our journey has been. And we need to continually reflect on that, where we came from, where we've been, and where God has brought us out of and up to this point in our lives, whether it be through uh, uh, healing, whether it be through uh, living in sin daily basis and, and denouncing God and bringing us to where we're at, we need to remember where we came from. Andy? And I think if we start that, I think they say, uh, BC probably knows this, but after three weeks it becomes a habit. If you do it, start something every day, after three weeks it becomes a habit. And it's just like runners. Runners who go run, when, when, once they're in the habit of running, if they don't run, they miss it. Their bodies miss it. And that's the same way with our own spiritual lives. We, we, uh, we begin to miss it. And we, begin to, and we begin to fade away, and we begin to fill that with something else if we don't do it. <clears throat> the, uh, Jeremiah raises uh, ethical and moral considerations and that are pertinent in our society today and where we're always grap uh, grappling with different issues. And, um, uh, but, you know, we may not be going to face a invasion from the north like Judah uh, eventually suffers but our actions do have consequences our sins do have consequences and with all the unrest that's on the wall out there uh, you know it's kind of like the writings on the wall and if we continue to ignore them then we may have a point of no return so no matter how far we've strayed Jeremiah assures us here that there's always a path to return, and God promised them that if they would return, that he would restore them. But all of this requires a knowledge of our own failures our, and a sincere repentance when we acknowledge those failures and the commitment to change our lives. That's all. Any other comments? Let's close in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank thee for this day. Father, we thank thee for 